<laughs> oh, hello. It's Mrs. Berniscus. You should have your assignment sheet out in front of you. Uh, there are seven assignments, and as you follow along on this lecture about the 1862 conflict involving the U.S. military and um, the Dakota people, you will be filling in the assignments. Pause this video for each assignment because you'll need more time. I'm just going to go through the lecture and you should pause as needed. We talked about already um, your viewing in 10th grade of Chimamanda Adichie's Danger of a Single Story. We looked at Iron Eyes Cody and learned that he was really Italian. We talked a little bit about Pocahontas and she is beloved but pretty inaccurate. We looked at this Victoria's Secret model. Uh, we could also talk about the portrayal of women in the media, but we're not going to go there. We didn't talk about Native American mascots so much, but again, there is this article if you want to read it very recently from uh, November, Star Tribune. We talked about the, tri uh, the tribes and reservations in Minnesota. And I think we left off on the fact that it was so ironic that in 1924, the first residents of what is known as the United States were conferred citizenship. We're going to talk more specifically about the 1862 conflict. If you've already learned about this in history class, great. I'm going to show you some things you probably didn't see in history class. The quote you may have heard so far as I am concerned, if they are hungry, let them eat grass, said by Andrew Myrick, a white man who traded with the, uh, the Dakota. Um, now, I don't know I don't think humans can eat grass. I don't think they can subsist on a grass diet. Uh, I don't think that constitutes veganism or any type of diet. Cows and horses, perhaps, but um, hmm, interesting. Assignment number one. There are three parts to this assignment. You're going to look at three different images. First, look at this photo by Benjamin Franklin Up Upton. Find the, the part on assignment number one where it says reaction or response to Franklin Upton or Benjamin Franklin Upton. What's the story of this image? What's going on? Where is it? Who is it? What are the people doing? Why are they there? Write three to four sentences. Pause this video so you have time to do that. I'm just going to continue on. Some of you may know where this is. Second part of assignment number two where it says reaction to Dave Geyser's painting. This is a close up of the photo you just saw. Now, I'm guessing most of you will be able to tell where this is by looking at some of the more specific imagery. Many of you have been to this place. But what can you add? What are the people doing in this image? Pay attention to the background as well and add two more sentences where it says reaction to Dave Geyser. Again, pause the video. So what you just viewed was uh, an internment camp slash concentration camp. Uh, 1600, more than 1600 Dakota and mixed bloods as they were called were forcibly removed, forced to go to a camp at, at Fort Snelling and spend the winter of 1862 and 1863 there. They could not leave. They were prisoners. According to reports and to oral histories, they endured assaults. They endured horrible uh, sickness that led to many death deaths. Uh, they were kind of a media circus as civilians were allowed in the camp for, for much of the time they were there just to view and, um, and see these, these prisoners. Last part of assignment number one, look at Carolyn Lee Anderson's image, 2008. How is this image different than the previous two? Again, this entire PowerPoint is on Moodle, not recorded, so you can go back and look if you want to. Um, at the other images. Add a final sentence to where it says Carolyn, a reaction or response to Carolyn Lee Anderson. So over the next few days, or really, you're going to take the next few days to examine the events that, that preceded the establishment of this camp. Um, this says to leave the fifth point blank. Do not leave the fifth point blank. Um, you're going to view a photo story from the Star Tribune, and you're going to do assignment number two. Forget about this. Complete every um, complete every point. So you're going to fill in five points after viewing this photo story. Just write down five things that you remember the most uh, from this photo story video. The Star Tribune did a huge week-long uh, in-depth feature on the 1862 conflict in Minnesota.
of 20 that were killed, 17 were traitors. It's not like we just went out there randomly and started killing uh, white people. We killed those traitors. It was the one that was cheating us all those years. That's who died first. And then I got out of control. Like war does. Men lose their minds in war and do things they shouldn't. The Dakota people in Minnesota were starving 150 years ago. The annual payments of food and gold were delayed with the Civil War raging down south. As white settlers poured in, a group of young warriors turned to their reluctant chief, Little Crow, to lead them in a battle they hoped would win back the land they'd called home for generations. Little Crow told him that we're going to lose everything. He'd seen the might of the military when he was in Washington, so he knew what was going to happen. One of the young warriors said, ah, you're a coward. He said, no, I'll fight with you and die with you, but we're going to lose everything. A lot of people died on both sides, but the women and children were marched from Morton, Minnesota, all the way up to these little towns, and a lot of them died on the way here. A lot of horrible things happened to them on their way. White immigrant farmers had flooded into the four-year-old state of Minnesota from Germany, Scandinavia, Scotland, and other lands, hoping to forge better lives for their families. Many were friends with the Dakota and were caught completely off guard and unarmed when war erupted in 1862. Now, 150 years later, descendants such as Mary McConnell search for answers. The men were making hay in the valley near where Morton now stands. The Indians hitched up our team and put mother, my little sister, a baby of five weeks, and myself into the wagon. Father came hurrying up from the field to get Grandmother McConnell out of the house, but she had escaped and was hiding a short distance from the house. Father had motioned for us to start on, hoping he could find her and catch us. Just before we went around a turn in the road, we saw an Indian shoot him. A lot of them were shot. Their babies were taken from their hands and killed, and just a lot of horrible, horrible things. Mother said that she saw the Indians holding consultations many times and believed that they would have shot her if it wasn't for friendly Indians for whom she had fed on many previous occasions. They still don't want to honor the treaties. I mean, you look in the Constitution and treaties are the supreme law of the land, but they never honored any of them with us. I'm really sad about what happened to my ancestors. I think it's a tragic story all the way up long. They were heading to the Fort Road. They had to come across this field. Their bones are probably out there. If they were escaping, they could be buried in this field. In this area, up, up near the coulee there. But where do you think they were hanging? Oh, they were oh, friends. It's just incredible that that peaceful little creek was the scene of such violence. Ignorance is racism. They told us that we were devil worshippers. Well, the devil didn't come over until Christopher Columbus landed. He was number 287 of the prisoners that were sent to prison. He was a young man with a family in Hu Shasha's band. Well, I've read the account, you know, the trial. Where it says, were you at New Ulm? He says, no, I wasn't there. Were you at Birch Cooley? No, I wasn't there. I was sick. And there were like four questions. After that, he just said, no, I wasn't there. I didn't fire at the white men. Uh, four denials. And then the last the last line was, I fired one shot. And then in really beautiful, ornate script, it said, Mazadidi has been found guilty and is sentenced to be hanged by the neck until he is dead. As I looked over that beautiful script and that beautiful piece of paper, and I felt so sick because here he had denied, 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 and then the I fired one shot came from nowhere. And I read that, and I... I cried. What really happened is we were trying to cleanse our lands again because treaties were signed 
that gave away all our lands here and they weren't honored. Our people were starving and they decided that they would take back our land. Always do this to each other over and over again. In fact, the Dakota were pushed off their lands by the Chippewa, and they were starving when that happened. And it's you know it's a story that continues till today. Look what happened in Bosnia. You should be filling out the five point summary on your sheet, just five things you remember from this video. Okay, we're moving on to the critical art analysis. I'm going to show you two images. Um, both you could say are images of what started the conflict in 1862, the actual, the really the only war ever fought in Minnesota. Um, you're going to look at the image on the following slide and fill out the chart, not on Moodle, um, but on your assignment sheet. I made it easier by, by uh, creating these assignment sheet. So, uh, so there are four squares. Upper left, what do you notice? What are some concrete objects? Upper right, what does it remind you of? Books, movies? Lower left, how does it make you feel? And what do you think this image is depicting? Again, pause this video so you can have time to look at the image. Assignment number four, you're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time you're going to do it with a different image. The first one was by a man named Anton Gog, and um, I'm not sure if he's French. I know he's not Dakota, but the second image is by a Dakota uh, man named Dwayne Wilcox. It's from 2012. The Crow is to Die For. I have a poster of this in my room. Take a few minutes to fill out the chart on your worksheet, assignment number four. Pause the video so you have time to answer each question thoroughly. Assignment number five, keyword notes. You're going to read a short article from the Star Tribune, and I've divided it into four sections. After each section, I want you to identify the keywords and ideas from each section. So fill section one in here, section two, section three, and section four. Here's section one. Pause it so you can fully read it. Section two, fill in the upper right corner when you're done. Section three, section four. All right, assignment number five. You've viewed a lot of material now, and I want you to uh, fill in the cause and effect map on your worksheet. Um, identify three causes of the Dakota conflict and three effects. Pause this if you need to refer back, or you could also view the actual PowerPoint on Moodle if you want to look back at any of the information. And finally, the last assignment, thesis practice. What caused the Dakota to rise up in the 1862 conflict? Uh, your thesis should answer that question. And remember, remember, a good thesis is a roadmap. It offers a way to more clearly understand a specific question. It answers a how or a why. It makes a claim that is arguable. You're not just summarizing. You're arguing a point that someone could disagree with. This is a very controversial subject. Okay, so once you've done this, you've completed all the assignments. I'm going to collect your packet on Monday. Hope you're having a great weekend.